Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in the previous videos up to this one, we worked towards creating a, a Dragonfly, an urban energy model of this district in, uh, in Buffalo, New York. Uh, and we're almost ready to send this off to a simulation, but there's one last property that I wanted to be able to adjust uh, before I go and, and send this off uh, for, uh, for a fully detailed energy simulation in, in order to get results. And that's the fact that uh, we have right now, we have HVAC systems assigned to our, our various uh, Dragonfly buildings that we see in the scene here, but we'll notice that they're all ideal air load systems, which uh, those of you who, who know Energy Plus and, uh, and know Honeybee well realize that this is not a real type of HVAC system. This is just a kind of theoretical or ideal system that gives us how much heating or cooling needs to be added or removed from the building. Really what we'd like to get at the end of the day, though, is something like electricity and fuel so that we can really start to evaluate things like utility uh, costs and uh, and you know and savings that we would have from that by implementing certain types of HVAC systems. So in this video I'm just I'm not going to make a very sophisticated type of HVAC system we're just going to make some of the uh, kind of baseline systems that would be applicable for uh, the buildings in our model here uh, but they are going to be detailed they are going to give us electricity and fuel out of the simulation at the end of the day. So, all right, now that we've kind of, I'm going to go full grasshopper here. And uh, let's see, first off, I'm gonna, probably going to make a little bit more space here uh, in the definitions so that uh, in between the, the kind of assignment of windows that we're doing here uh, and this ultimate kind of uh, joining of everything into a singular dragonfly model, I'm going to look, take a look at, uh, let's see, I'll pull up a panel here. I want to basically assign a take a insert a component here that's going to assign detailed HVAC systems for the various uh, uh, buildings that we see here. So, all right. So first things first. If you guys look under the Dragonfly tab, most of what we've been doing so far has been all under this Create tab, all all about just creating the base model. But there's a whole section that we haven't touched yet that is just for the energy properties of your Dragonfly models. And uh, you'll see kind of in the middle of this section, there are a few components for assigning HV, various types of detailed HVAC templates to your Dragonfly objects. Uh, and so this is what I'm actually going to work with in order to be able to assign detailed HVAC systems to our Dragonfly buildings here. And in particular, all the systems that I'm going to apply are, they're going to be all air systems, they're going to be systems that supply both heating and cooling and ventilation with the same airstream. Uh, which again is, are those baseline systems that I mentioned earlier. So if I go and drag and drop this DF all air HVAC component on the canvas, you'll see that it, can, it takes as an input Dragonfly objects, it spits out Dragonfly objects that have that detailed system added to them. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight and take my buildings that I have here, these Dragonfly buildings, and connect those up to the DF objects. Um, and you'll see we haven't supplied everything that this component needs yet. And you can always click this orange balloon. It'll say that it needs to have this system type input supplied uh, in order for us to be actually be able to run this component and get edited objects out of it. So the system type is actually, if those of you who have used Honeybee to assign detailed HVAC systems probably realize that this is, uh, you know, it should look very familiar because it's a lot like the uh, HVAC components that we use in Honeybee to assign detailed HVAC templates to um, to our Honeybee rooms. In fact, actually, if you were to look at the Honeybee equivalent of this, right, it's very, very similar. Almost the, all the inputs are exactly the same, except we have Dragonfly inputs instead of Honeybee rooms. Um, but the reason why I jumped over to Honeybee is that this drop-down list, the, this uh, list of HP all their HVAC templates, this is what we're actually going to use in order to be able to specify the system type that we want to assign to our Dragonfly uh, buildings here. And you guys will remember, if, you know, working with, with Honeybee, uh, that there are, you know, well over, between all the different dropdowns that we have, there are well over 100 HVAC templates that you can work from. Uh, for the case of all air, I think it's something around 50 or so in, in, in this list, all, all uh, different types of, uh, of, of HVAC systems that you can assign. Uh, I think actually, though, I'm going to take the one that we already have selected right now, this VAV chiller with gas boiler reheat. This, I know, is what the, the kind of baseline model is for any commercial building over five stories. I know that the code uh, recommends that you use this VAV uh, system with, with, uh, with uh, gas reheat. So if I go and connect this up to our system type here, you see that the component's going to run. 
uh, and out of it, we're going to just get, you know, the same thing that we got in, except just that the, the detailed HVAC systems have been added uh, to, to this. Um, let's see. But now if I go and I connect this and I create my Dragonfly model uh, using these edited buildings right now, connecting those up to the building's input there, and I can check in the Rhino scene, you'll see now we have, right, instead of uh, having uh, uh, ideal air systems assigned to each and every individual room, now we have, uh, right, each each building is getting its own VAV system, right, this VAV chiller with gas boiler reheat. Uh, and I can see right now the names here are not really very descriptive. It's all their HVAC. At the very least, I feel like I should name the system, uh, what is it, we can call it VAV uh, system. Uh, actually, probably the A could be capitalized there. Right, or something like that. If I plug that in for the name, right, at least, uh, well, I guess now they're all getting the same system, although they'll, they'll each have a separate one uh, when we eventually go to export each model to its own, uh, sorry, each building to its own Honeybee model. Uh, maybe I guess what I, ideally what I want to do is plug in a list of, of, of systems here, though. Um, and actually, taking a second and looking at this, you guys will see we have a bunch of different types of, of buildings here. Some of them are commercial, but some of them are, are residential. And uh, you heard me just say like a minute ago that this VAV chiller with gas boiler reheat, this is really only intended for the case of uh, commercial buildings, right? Commercial buildings that are, I mean, usually have a certain square footage or larger or a certain number of stories, uh, more than five stories, uh, would get this template. So at the least, maybe we'll say that we should apply a different type of HVAC system to the residential buildings here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm actually just going to copy and paste uh, this. So even before I go and start uh, editing the names here, I want to make sure that I'm using the right templates. So for those of you who are familiar with the International Energy Conservation Code or ASHRAE 90.1, you probably already know that the, the baseline system for, for residential buildings is a package terminal air conditioner. Uh, right, and we have a few different types of PTACs here. To keep things consistent with how we're modeling the VAB, I'm also going to use a, uh, a, a gas boiler in this case. We'll use gas boiler reheat. Um, so I'm going to just select this from the drop down of PTACs with, with uh, that gas boiler reheating. Uh, and in order to basically make sure that uh, I'm assigning the correct system to the, to the, uh, to the proper building, uh, I'm going to use the same thing that I did back here, right, where we uh, created a list of building programs that align with the, uh, with, with the various uh, uh, building geometries. I'm going to do the same exact thing that we, we did over uh, here. So actually, you know what, instead of copy pasting this, I'm just going to bring up a brand new merge component. So I'll just double click and type uh, merge to bring up that native grasshopper merge component. Uh, and maybe let me just make, I'm going to zoom in here so we can see things clearly. So, all right, so the very first building in our list is residential. So I'm going to connect that up to the first slot of the merge component. The next one is a strip mall. So with that, I'm just, I'll take a VAV system. Then we have another residential building, residential three. Then we have mixed use, which I'll just use a VAV uh, template for. Then we have a hospital, which is a, which is a VAV. Uh, another hospital, oh, oops, sorry, another hospital after that. Uh, then office, so VAV. And then, all right, then we got one, two, three, four, five residential. Oh, sorry, no, the last one's restaurant. So just four residential. One, two, three, four. And then last we have restaurant and mixed use, which can both be VAV system. All right. So now you'll see out of this component, I, and I can just zoom in and, and minus on the 14 there, right? Now I have a list of, of HVAC system templates that should align with the building objects that I'm putting into this component. So, all right, now that I have this, let's, let's do this like this. And I'm going to plug in my list of system types to, uh, to our, our DF All Air uh, component here. All right, let's see. Let's see it work its magic. Okay, the component took a long time to run, and I see actually that there was an error in the way that I set things up here because I'm definitely getting, I got a lot of copies of my Dragonfly buildings here that I did not expect. So 
as you can imagine, the reason for this is actually goes back to the the, the same reason that we we had to deal with uh, right with these dotted lines here, right? We ideally want to make sure that we have data trees of the buildings and the um, uh, and the and the HVAC templates that are aligned with one another. So first thing is first, maybe I'm just going to uh, stop this component from running quickly while I make a few changes here. So I'm just going to select it. I can right click and disable it by by uh, you know clicking on the enabled one here. So this will kind of freeze the component. So while I, I change things to make sure that the two things will be aligned with one another, uh, it's not going to it's not going to run uh, keep running. So first things first, I think I want to, I don't want to flatten this input anymore. I think I'd rather graft it. And I'd want to do the same thing to the system types in order to make sure that, uh, right, that this this list of, you know, of, of branch items is going to be aligned with that list of branched items. And I think that should basically be it. Really all that, that this grafting, you'll notice you can graft anywhere, whether that's on the input to this uh, or, you know, or that's on the, the output of a component as we did here. Right, you can really graft anywhere as long as you know basically that things are going to be aligned when you send them uh, into the same component. That all works. So if I go and I right click and I'll enable this component again, now we should see. I think we'll just get yeah. Now we get one uh, right, one building, one set of buildings. I mean, each is in its own branch of the tree, but that's okay, right? Because uh, I mean, at the end here, I guess we're still getting the the VAV system coming out here. Uh, right, so we probably want to change the names of these systems as well. Uh, and to make things simpler, actually, maybe I'll just do the same exact thing that I did for, uh, you know, we'll actually just take the same names of the templates here and we'll, we'll plug those in for the names of the, uh, uh, the systems. In order to do this, I'm going to graph this input then. And then I, uh, if I go and I connect these uh, templates right to the name, uh, this will actually show, okay, we can at least see much more clearly which ones are VAV systems, right? This looks correct. And then which ones are getting the, the packaged thermal air conditioners, the PTAC systems. Okay. All right. So with that, right now, at least we know that we've assigned some detailed HVAC systems uh, to to these, these Dragonfly buildings that are coming out of here, right? And that's what we're ultimately previewing uh, as we uh, as we check things in the in the Rhino scene here. So let me just clean this up a little bit. Maybe I can, you know, this kind of can be in its own type of group here of assigning all air uh, HVAC systems to this. So I think at this point we're finally ready to go. We know that this Dragonfly model coming out of here, we know that it has, you know, constructions that are sensitive to the climate. We know we have programs that are aligned with what we're expecting for these various buildings. We know that there are windows assigned. We know that there are detailed HVAC systems that will allow us to get Energy use out of the out of the, the, the final simulation, uh, right? And we know that the tops and bottom stories are separated, so we can account for heat flow through the roof. So this should pretty much be everything. You know, this Dragonfly model is good to go. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be jumping back over the Dragonfly tab and continuing to work with this Energy tab, and we're going to finally get at least halfway to running this simulation uh, using the the UrbanOpt SDK, the UrbanOpt. Uh, 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 command line interface and software development kit uh, to execute the simulation in parallel. Uh, so thank you guys for making it through this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.